All right, everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and the day has come for me to get rid of my F8 Spider, and it's not all bad news because my SF90 came in. Now, I was expecting a little bit more of a gap. They said it would probably be a year and a half to two years for me to get the SF90. I've had this for a little over a year, and the SF90 is here. So this one is effectively, and it's a tough one now because I'm not the YouTuber that pretends like I've got all the available cash in the world. Um, I don't have all the available cash in the world, and I don't think I can, and I can for a little bit, but I, I can't float the SF90, which is over $600,000, and this one at the same time, cash flow-wise. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. It'll probably be a month uh, for me to sell this. Obviously, gotta find the right buyer, but this is gonna go up to the dealership. The SF90, I'll just get financing or put it on my floor plan, and I'll have both cars temporarily, but I'm not gonna technically have both cars temporarily because this one's gonna be for sale. Uh, we'll drive this up there now. Not my favorite Ferrari, only because it's the turbo version, not the naturally aspirated version. For me, I fell in love with Ferraris when I was younger. The naturally aspirated F1 sound is a game changer for me. It's the end of the day. This is a better, faster car. I remember when I picked it up, I think I made a video about it. I've put maybe 750 miles on it in a year. I'll do that on my 458 in a month. So very, very different, um, but sexy car, convertible. It's, I'm actually one of the first Ferraris I'm ever gonna make money on uh, is this one and not make money in the traditional sense where I bought a 360, kept it for four years, drove it, put 20,000 miles on it, and it, it plus minus me $1,000 or, or cost me $1,000. This one is probably worth considerably over what I, what I bought it for, uh, probably to the tune of like 100 or 150,000. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to the dealership. That's one of the things that you do when you're involved in um, making money on a Ferrari. If you're losing money on a Ferrari, the dealership doesn't care. If you're going to be making money on a car, they want a piece of that, which is perfectly fine um, because I do get um, allocations for cars and I've been buying them for so long. It's the game that I understand that you have to do. Uh, so I'll bring it back to the dealership. I'll let the dealership sell this one. I'm gonna check out my SF90 when I'm up there. Uh, I'm not gonna pick it up today. I'll probably get it next week sometime, but let's go bring it up to the dealership. We'll give it one last ride and not like the one last ride for when you sell the car and you're like, all right, guys, sent me a deposit. Let me go rip my car one more time, beat the crap out of it, and then you crash your car. I'm just gonna go up to the dealership, drop it off, uh, probably take an Uber over to my house, then go from there um, back down here with the Tesla and start doing some other stuff because I am so swamped from picking up that little Ford Transit van in Chicago. I lost three days going to Chicago, doing the Breitling event and coming back here, three days of travel. But we're catching up. Let's get up to the dealership, check out the SF90, and we'll show you just, obviously, a little chit-chat in the car about my final thoughts on this one. All right, it's funny. The last time I drove this car, this road was not paved. I'm still like PTSD on this road. I'm afraid to go too fast because like in my head, I'm gonna fall into a pothole and never be seen again. One of the biggest issues I have with this car is it's too much technology, which is not what I like. Granted, sure, I'll take the technology in a S class. I don't need it in a Ferrari. I just want something that makes nice noises, is fun to drive, and it looks good and sounds good. That's all I need in the Ferrari. I'm sure I am. And that's unfortunately what they're going away from is they're getting more into the electrification, into the hybrids, into the over technology. This car makes so many beeps and everything like that. I've never even played with it to make all the, the uh, lane assist nannies and everything like that go away. I don't want the car ever breaking for me. And I get why people do, right? Like in a regular car, if you're coming up too fast on somebody, you want it to stop and not hit the car in front of you. In a sports car, you may be going and doing a maneuver where the car is calculating that you're gonna hit the car, but you see where you're going, which is not there, and then it starts to screw around with you by changing your speed or your trajectory, and it's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I know what I'm doing, Stop, like, turn it off. So I didn't get involved with that in this car. I didn't really dive into everything that needed to be turned off and on, but in default mode, it is not, not my cup of tea with the, the beeping and the sensors and telling you who's next to you and beep, 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 like you're gonna hit the car next to you. I'm not, I don't hit cars. I'm not worried about hitting a car, but if you keep doing all this stuff, it's very frustrating. So that's one of my biggest concerns with this car is just that there's more technology than I want and I need. I'm sure, as I said, you can probably turn most of it off, 
but I just don't think it's necessary. Oh, let me get next to a car and then you'll see. Now what all cars are doing, and it's very unfortunate, is they're going from fun cars to like faster cars. And they're like, oh, it's so much faster, but it's the whole electric car versus like ice car argument is that I don't care if your Model S Plaid is faster. If you put a, a 458 and a Model S Plaid next to each other, or like a GT3 RS and a Model S Plaid, I don't care how much faster the Tesla is in a straight line around a racetrack, it doesn't matter. I want that GT3. That is the experience that I'm out to enjoy. And that is unfortunately being regulated out by a lot of these governments that you're not gonna be able to have these fun cars anymore. So that's why there's been a slow transition and to make these cars faster, obviously you can only make a naturally aspirated motor make so much power. They had to do the hybrid powertrains, which is why the LaFerrari got it, and the P1 and all these, and the 918, they all got these hybrid powertrains because you can't just stuff a big 800 horsepower hunking engine in the car anymore and, and that's not gonna win the race. So they had to add that. And the, the easiest way to do it on a mass production level and a cheaper way to do it was turbos, which is where you saw the 488 and the F8 go. And it's just, I grant, granted I'll acknowledge that they're faster than the 458, but you know what? Sometimes a 458 is fast enough. And for me, a 458 is fast enough. Now I feel like this is my like fulcrum. This is now I'm becoming the old muscle car guy being like, I don't need your fancy new technology or something. Just give me my 69 Chevelle SS. And like, I could be that guy now, but I'm happy where I am. Like you find something that, that's good for you and you stick there, that's pretty much where I'm at. Now, I'm gonna turn this in and get a faster car. <laughs> so if I'm gonna have the new technology, I'm gonna have the fastest version of the new technology because the SF90 I'm about to pick up makes over 900 and something horsepower. It's like 986 horsepower. Let's just round it to a thousand. I am picking up a factory stock, bone stock, drive it across the country with a warranty thousand horsepower Ferrari for not hypercar money. And, and granted, it's what the Enzos and everything used to cost, which is about 650,000, but now, I'm getting something that's a little bit more mass produced and is more car than most people would ever need on the planet. All right, so here I backed in my F8 Spider, and I'm gonna leave it there. It's got a service appointment due, not that there's really any service at 750 miles, but it does have a active recall notice for some nonsensical thing. So they'll take care of that. They'll put that on the showroom floor and I will figure out how to pay for this one, which is, absolutely stunning actually in person it's a white sf90 which you don't see them in white too often much more common in red and other colors but this thing looks amazing i'm gonna go inside i'm gonna find my sales guy and see what we can do quick shout out to my own company adventure drive so we do these driving events all over the world 2023 is no exception we've got three trips coming up one from washington dc to nashville this is from april 26th to the 30th then in July, we're doing a trip to Italy, which is gonna be phenomenal. It's all Northern Italy, starting and ending in Rome. You're gonna love that one. And if you can't make it overseas or to the East Coast trip, you've got plenty of runway for the September 20th to 25th drive, starting in Napa Valley and ending in Las Vegas. That's gonna be a great trip as well. Check them out. I put a link right below in the description of every video. Hope to see you out there.